What's up guys? So today's vlog is gonna be really fun. So today what we're gonna be doing is color and a haircut on a live model. I know you guys like those videos. The inspiration for today's video came partly from my model, Ani, who I've done her hair in the past. And then the other inspiration for this video came from Paul Mitchell themselves because I was talking to them and they were talking about how it's the 20th anniversary of The Color. This is the Paul Mitchell, the original The Color. So. I can't believe it's been 20 years. I've used this color for a very long time since the beginning of my career. So I wanted to create a video um, catering to what Ani wants and then also showing you guys some really cool color technique and also a haircut. So Ani came in and she had really brassy ends of her hair from pretty much the mid shaft to the end and she wanted to go back to more of her natural color. So what I decided to do was create a block color technique for you guys. It's a very simple technique that you'll be able to use in the salon right away. Uh, it gives multi dimension to hair color and also brings out the haircut as well. So I think you guys are gonna like this video we also, uh, she requested a certain haircut and this is the cut that she decided to go with. And the thing I like about this haircut is it starts a little bit shorter, gets a little bit longer. This was off of Pinterest, so it's where a lot of our guests get their ideas. It says 21 cute lob haircuts for the summer. So they're considering this a lob haircut. It is definitely a longer kind of bob feel to it, but I would say it's definitely longer than a long bob, but we'll call it a long bob just to be safe and we'll blame it on Pinterest. So, hope you guys enjoy this video. If you are liking this video, then make sure you hit the like button and also share this video into a hairdresser group so we can spread these free salon education videos to as many hairdressers as possible. Thank you guys so much. Hope this video inspires you. Let's get started. All right guys, so I wanted to give you a good look at the before on Ani's hair. So it's very brassy on the ends, pretty much all the way up through mid shaft, almost to the base, so only about two inches of dark. So she wants to go back to her natural color, which you can see it coming through. So I'm gonna do a block color technique. What I'm doing is I'm doing a zigzag parting around the top of the head. So basically above the parietal, back below the parietal, back above the parietal, and what that's gonna do is give me little triangle sections uh, to allow the hair to fall in different dimensions. So now we're gonna get into mixing Paul Mitchell the color. This is 7NB, it's a neutral blonde. So the reason I went level seven, some of you guys are probably like, well, that's not close to our natural, is I really just wanted to soften this 5A. So I've got the 5A, which is an ash tone. It's got a blue base, so it's going to be nice and deep. But then I'd use the 7MB just to just to kind of uh, soften it, warm it up a bit, give it almost that level six feel, but still keeping the 5A to get rid of that orange tone. So we're using our blue base to get rid of the orange tone. Then I go in, my second formula is gonna be 5NN, which is a light neutral, neutral brown. So this has a lot of depth to it, and this is where I'm gonna get my darkest tone, and I'm not cutting that with anything, so I'll get a true level five, almost appearing as a level four. And I mix 10 volume with both of these formulas. So what's gonna happen is the 5NN, I'm gonna put on the bottom part uh, of, that, of her head, and then I'm gonna put the other formula on the top of her head, and it's gonna mix and match because of that sectioning that we did. So I start off and I start coloring the bottom. I put on that 5NN and I color around each of those little triangle pieces. So some of you guys have been out there. This isn't a technique I created. This is a technique that is just great. Uh, block coloring is an unbelievable way to create dimension within hair color. And I think it's what makes us professional is being able to go in there and create multi, uh, kind of multi-dimensional uh, tones throughout the head. That's the whole purpose. Natural hair is never one color, right? Because the sun lightens it up or whatever. So I go in, I add the depth underneath. Uh, so I paint everything at the base first. I work my way all the way around the head and then I paint it through the ends. That tends to work for me. Some people really love to uh, paint scalp to ends right away. I think painting the scalp, getting that on as quick as possible so it's nice and consistent and then getting everything else on as quick as possible, uh, it works the best. And it's just my preference, but you guys can do it however you like. So again, just painting through. Another little quick tip. Uh, this is uh, something I learned from my pal Colin Caruso a long time ago is using the rat tail comb in my hand while I'm painting. So I'm not messing up my brush and I just use that rat tail to take my section and then I'm already ready to paint. So it's just a quick way to get through the head uh, and that works really well as, as well. So there's a little tip for you. 
So now I go through, once I have that 5NN on the base and I just paint it through the ends, working the color back and forth. The thing I like about Paul Mitchell the color is it's got a nice uh, creamy consistency to it. So it glides through the hair really well. Uh, we get a lot of saturation and it's just a really great hair color true to tone. So I use 10 volume as well. I'm not trying to lift this, obviously. She's already at the level that I needed. So I think too many people go extreme with their developer. And then when you do that, you're lifting the hair underneath and, and I didn't want that. So because she's already at a level five on her root, if I would have put 20 volume on there, I might have lifted her root and created more orange tone than I wanted. And I wouldn't have got the softer result that I get at the end. So now painting the top formula, the 7NB, mixed with that 5A. And just so you guys know, I don't think I mentioned it yet, but the, the mixture of that was, it was two parts of the 5A to one part of the NB. So still keeping it a nice deep tone, but just adding that 7MB in there to soften it up. So once I get that painted through, then I'm gonna twist the whole section up together and kind of knot it away. Uh, the only reason I, I do this just to keep it clean and out of the way. It's really no, uh, no other reason to do it. So that'll show you. You can see the dips and the highs and the valleys throughout that. Um, that's, it's basically like creating a star technique on the head without being a star. I process that for 35 minutes and then we can get into our cut. This is the Donald Scott carving comb. This is a cool tool available in two different forms. There's a fine tooth and a wide tooth on freesaloneducation.com. And I'm gonna use that for the haircut. And I'm also gonna use Olaplex number two as kind of a, a treatment because it's a bond multiplier. So it's gonna help create extra bonds in her hair, but also at the same time, um, using a razor. So a lot of people freak out about using a razor. I used a fresh blade. I use Olaplex number two so she gets a treatment the entire time and I go in and I start my cut. I took the uh, parting basically straight down uh, center back and then I went from the occipital bone over to the ear. Pretty standard sectioning for me and I just hold everything horizontally and I carve through it with the 100% cutting side of the carving comb. Then I go through, you can see what I'm doing now, is I go through with the 50% cutting side, so I'm only taking out every other section of hair, and I just debulk the ends. The whole point of this haircut, I think, is to make it nice and light throughout the ends, but still have a blunt feel. That might not make much sense, but you see a lot of people maybe walking around the supermarket that have had this haircut done with a scissor and they just get it cut blunt and then it becomes super heavy. So I love the razor for this cut because every time I take that one inch kind of uh, pattern back and forth on the hair, that stroking pattern, you're softening the edge. And that's why this haircut lays so nice at the end. So I go through 100% cutting side. I keep bringing everything back to that one point. It's a very simple cut, um, but you just want to make sure that you're doing all of your strokes the same way and consistent. And then also, as I start to work my way off to the edge, I start letting the hair get a little bit longer. So almost drawing it with a pencil to be longer towards the side. I didn't want to continue that line across because it would have been too short in the front. And Ani really wanted that length in the front. That was kind of her big thing, uh, was to make sure that she had preserved that length uh, in the front of her head. So you can see the angle that's happening, and what I do is I just pinch cut, so I grab the hair that I want to cut, and I clean it up the line after I cut it the first time. So it's just going through. That's a, one thing I love about the razor is it's basically just like using a pencil to draw exactly what you want on the head. I'm also, normally I would be in a cutting stool, but Ani's sitting on a cutting stool, so she was pretty low to the ground, so I'm actually on my knees uh, going through and cutting this, but it's nice to be nice and low to the work um, as opposed to bending over and trying to get your cut the right way. So I love using a cutting stool uh, in situations like this. So again, you can see me go in with the 50% carved side. That's just softening the edge. So I cut the blunt edge, then I go through and I soften it with the 50% carve. If you guys have never seen the carving comb before, it's available on freesaloneducation.com. That's our website. Um, you can purchase it. It's like 40 bucks. I think it's $39. Uh, pick up some extra blades on there as well. Uh, it's a great tool to have because 
Not only is it a razor, it has two different types of razor, it has a comb, so you can also hold your scissors at the same time. So it's almost a, a tool that allows you to hold three different tools in your hand at the same time. Now see how I'm kind of stretching and creating length on the edge? That's really just to preserve that length and it's customizing it, right? So you could do that with scissors as well, just go through and point cut. You just get more of a blunt edge and a bulkier, um, you get bulk a bulkier feel on the ends. Wow, that was easy for me to say. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going through 50% carved side just through the edges. I did it a few times on the right side, that's the bulkier side, and then I just do it one time on the weak side, which is the side her part's on. Um, I, you don't want to overdo it because you don't want too much layering and you just want it to be nice and soft. So you can see that angle that we created. It is a little bit longer than the picture, but Ani was a little freaked out about uh, getting her hair cut short. Then what we had to do is because we put Olaplex number two in, we had to shampoo that out, condition her hair, then bring her back. I would charge extra for that treatment, uh, but it's an unbelievable treatment. It gives her hair a lot of shine and helps build those bonds. Now I'm going in with the Invisible Wear Volume Whip. I like to put my product in uh, and brush it through. So I'm using my Ergo Paddle Brush, brushing it through the hair and uh, getting it very consistent throughout the entire ends of the hair. And then I start in, uh, this is the Paul Mitchell Neuro Dryer, and I just work some of the moisture out of the hair. And then after I get it about, let's say, to the point where it's 60% uh, maybe 40% dry, let's say that. 40% dry, then I'll go through and start with my brush. I don't want to power dry the whole thing because then you lose the shine, you start lifting the cuticle up. But if you go through and then just do a little power dry, then work with your brush, you're good to go. And now I go in with the Invisible Wear Undone Texture Hairspray. And this really, you can see, I love putting hairspray on the hair when it's about 80 to 90% dry. A little bit of that spray, the texture spray, and then I go back in, blow it dry, then iron it, and you get this really nice shine and polish on the hair. You can see the color also come into life. It's not super dark. She wanted a chocolate feel. Uh, it's right at about what her base was, and it also has that dimension and movement, but it's not too different. Like we used a level five and we used a level six. Not crazy, um, but I'm not about coloring hair all crazy. I'm about creating very natural, uh, looks in hair. So you can see that angle that goes forward. I think you guys are going to be able to use that technique a lot. I hope you can. Also, I go through and I just touch it up with a scissor. Um, just any little hairs that are hanging out or anything like that, it's always good to go in and, and work on those details. So right there, I'm just showing you that because of that 50% carved side, you get that soft edge. Look at the shine and the, I mean, this color, there's a reason it's been around for the last 20 years. Beautiful shine. You can see the dimension in there. I hope you guys liked the video. Please let me know in the comments below if you have any questions about anything that you saw. Um, but I hope you guys liked the video as much as I like making it. I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks. guys like always i hope you liked the video if you did like it then make sure you hit like and share this video with all of your hairdresser friends and in all of your hairdresser groups so we can spread the word of free salon education to as many hairdressers as possible i really appreciate your guys' support on that thank you so much for watching and again if you want to pick up any of these tools like the donald scott carving comb go to freesaloneducation.com and you can buy those tools there and if you're interested in the Paul Mitchell products used in this video, go to paulmitchell.com and you can purchase those products. So thank you guys so much for checking out this video and I'll see you soon.